Uh, namaste. namaste. Meaning, I bow to you. I bow to the soul of God in you. So I come from Nepal, uh, which at the moment is in big trouble because of earthquakes. So probably we'll read a poem about earthquakes. Uh, these uh, politicians have about $2 billion or $3 billion and they're not spending it. They're just keeping it to their party workers and uh, it's quite a mess. Uh, but uh, Himalayas, everything is taken to be very holy. Even uh, Everest, we have a word for the Himalayas. It's Devatatma, meaning place where soul of a God lives. So earthquake is also taken as a holy thing, as a sacred thing. They say that uh, uh, Lord Shiva's bullock, uh, on the tip of his horn, the earth stands. So he holds the earth on the tip of his horn, Lord Shiva's bull. And when it gets too much trouble here, too much crime and too much bloodshed, he tries to move and shake and try to move the weight on, on the tip of his right horn to the left one, and that's when earthquakes occur. <laughs> so there are all kind of stories uh, about earthquake. And uh, I was there, so it's uh, I, this poem called I See My World Shaken. And uh, even I, I, the most shocking thing, you know, I go to shrines, we are religious. I mean, I'm not very religious, but still, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm brought, brought up like this, as part of the holy, you know, I'm a priest, so my caste. So I saw this, uh, the, the guard sleeping on the floor, I mean, it's like a homeless. The whole, whole five-story pagoda had gone. Several buildings have gone, so thousands of people dead. And uh, this poem called, I See My World Shaken. So that was the most horrific sight of my life. I see my world shaking. I see my world shaking. My floor, my bed, my table, my house, my pen stumbling across the soggy span of my page. The stanza splintered from the kicks of a demon awake after a sleep of millions of years. I see my world shaking. I see my squares mangled from the litter of a wheezing earth. I see top of our towers crumble and topple on to the dried up river beds. I see rickety bridges shudder, waters undulating in the Turkish lakes on the lofty Himalayan heights, a bowl of milk held in the hands of a fearful grandma. I see, I see dagger of snow crashing onto the mule paths, soul troops threading to the rocky terrains clogged. The sheets of snow stained from mammoth avalanches, pinnacles of snow thrust from earth's heart tumble and disappear in a fraction of a second in God's colossal mouth. I see domes of our stupas crack, five colored flags fluttering before Buddha's own eyes bend and break, oil's lips, oil lamps lit by Yeti's hollowed skull dim out in the sunken canyons of monks wailing eyes. I see famished angels coming out of the snow called centuries like saffron flames fleeing their kingdoms in exile. I see them coming out and lean against the mossy fences on the threshold of great canyons to ponder over the loss of lives, uttering prayers as earth cracks open and engulfs the settlements in front of their own bemused eyes. I see shrines of our deities shake Lord's own body cracked in two lifeless boulders, his mace, his scepter, his lotus, his conch shell, his brass bell of nectar, his splintered quiver full of blunt arrows. I see my world shaking. Wow. Only 30 seconds. So last poem, uh, I'm reading about New York City. Uh, it's because I love this place. Uh, uh, this. Uh, I, I, the poem is called uh, uh, You Are a New Yorker. Because I love the city so much, I mean, I come from all over the world. I travel, I never belong. I met this lady from Amsterdam. Uh, you go all over Europe, you live in France, Germany. But you never be a German or a French or, or, or Dutch. But you come to New York City, next day you are a New Yorker. Yeah. So this beauty of the city uh, for my friend Philip. You are a New Yorker. The day you learn to notice sparkle of sullen silences, snapping the darkness of damp burrows, or stop taking notes of wild blizzards, racing along the signature show, you are a New Yorker. The day you start 
hearing Gaga songs in the screeching subway cars. I stop saying, I don't know no Spanish to Latino elders seeking directions. You are a New Yorker. The day you start understanding the thick jumble of subway announcements or roadside pronouncements, you don't have to be a Rockefeller to be a generous guy. You are a New Yorker. The day you stop taking Free State and Island Ferry to click a perfect shot of Statue of Liberty or stop visiting Times Square at night and forget to find a way out of its labyrinth or learn to walk the Brooklyn Bridge without a secret desire to dangle a padlock on one of its rafters. I stop seeing Walt Whitman sitting atop its edge looking for his beautiful boys and vagabond fairies entering the sheltered bay. You are a New Yorker. Then you stop feeding spy dogs at Grand Central. You recognize the homeless that hang out at Port Authority or Jackson Heights. The day you pass through the shrunken midnight of Sutphany Boulevard or Jamaica subway station without holding your breath in terror, you are a New Yorker. The day you start loving Starbucks coffee, wafting along the white glassy Manhattan malls, or learn to chew the Brooklyn bagel, or lap up the steaming loneliness of chatty dog walkers around Central Park, or learn to make love and forget the face of your partner, you are a New Yorker. <laughs> The day you stop guessing origin of a blonde teenager reading the current issue of New Yorker, stop looking at the bare shoulders of Vietnamese girl on the free Wi-Fi table near the entrance of Sonas Village Cafe, opening and closing like red lips on the first day of winter snow. The day you pass by the Magnolia Bakery loaded from famed cupcakes and moose-sized cookies, the day you stop visiting White Horse Tavern to pose against Dylan Thomas' Duncan portrait, or stop, stop hearing John Lennon's voice, climbing the fire escape ladders of Hotel Chelsea, or stop looking for the room where she gave Lennon a cojone blowjob, you are a New Yorker. The day you stop gawking at the gay couples on L train, romancing like Bollywood couples, or fervently discussing pussy power, animal rights, or the ailing pets of parents. The day you stop staring at the Hesedak Jews of Williamsburg, their curls dangling out of their black velvet caps like Lord Shiva's sacred serpents, you are a New Yorker. The day you learn to laugh like a Latino bartender, or smile like a Filipino waitress, standing beside a stuffed rose pig like a queen, or stop looking at the cleavage of the new poet at Central Park, or learn to check your seat in the subway for a stain of shitty homeless matter <laughs> left by you, you are a New Yorker. And finally, the day the girl from Cleveland, Ohio, behind the counter of Greenwich Cafe, gives you her email, or offers a free top-up on your coffee, or lets you take her out, you are a New Yorker. <laughs>